the final module of today's lecture will focus on genetic engineering of biosynthetic pathways in plants. This is important to know because plants can be engineered to produce bioactive compounds. For instance, you may take a bioactive compound from a certain plant which is associated with a certain bioactive pathway and you may endeavor to produce this bioactive compound in another plant okay, which is pro probably more productive. For instance, you want to take a, you have a medicinal plant which is very slow growing, the productivity is very low and you want to commercialize the compound produced by this plant. So you transfer it maybe into a grass which has high productivity or you transfer it into rice. However, you need to transfer the whole genetic pathway. You need to transform the plant with all the genes in that pathway. So there's a procedure involved in molecular breeding. So the first thing you need to do is identify the plant and the associated compound. And from the compound, you can then work out the biosynthetic pathway. For instance, many of the compounds of medicinal importance or pharmaceutical importance are known and their pathways associated with them are known through biochemical analysis. So once you know the pathway, you can identify all the genes associated with that pathway, isolate them from the plant of interest and transform them into a plant with higher productivity. And that's the way how you capitalize the knowledge on genetics. Okay. So, the concept of molecular breeding goes back to an example in which it's ideal to transform a single gene or a multiple set of genes associated with a specific trait from a plant using genetic engineering and synthetic biology approach as opposed to using a breeding approach. For instance, a medicinal plant may not be able in, you may not be able to hybridize it with a variety of rice, for instance, because the chromosomal number is different. You cannot carry out a hybridization in a conventional sense using pollination. So you need to resort to genetic engineering in this case. So you then develop plants which are beyond the scope of a conventional breeding experiment. So these are the steps involved in molecular breeding, the first thing you need to do is identify the desired trait. After you identify the trait, you need to characterize the pathway, identify the gene involved in the pathway, the gene or genes. You then isolate the genes, you develop a construct using synthetic biology or using PCR based assembly of genes. You transform and deliver and then you screen and commercialize the plant. So these are the steps involved. However, this is looks simplistic. But the process is very complex. So, in this case, we have a hypothetical protein, we just call it DRR, which is linked to drought tolerance in rice, Oryza sativa. Okay. However, as you can see in the slide, this product DRR is a protein and the production of this specific protein requires several enzymatic steps. Okay. This protein, for example, you have the protein in its original form which is DRA. This protein has to be, for instance, the linkages have to be of amino acids have to be changed for which you require an enzyme DRAase 1. Then it goes to another step which is DR base 1 and DR case 1. So these represent hypothetical enzymes which are required for the transformation of DRA into DRR. Okay? Assuming that it's a protein or you can assume that it's a biosynthetic compound, a secondary metabolite. So in order to transform this trait into an elite variety of rice, you need to transfer the entire cluster of genes. Now the challenge is, in the wild type plant, all these genes are located on different chromosomes. So you have two approaches, one, you can sequence the genome, isolate the genes and you can use synthetic biology to develop your construct. Okay, that's a new way of doing things. However, the, in the conventional sense, 
in the conventional scheme of things, you have to isolate the genes. You already know how to isolate genes. You will use PCR. So you develop a primer for specific loci and you isolate all the genes in one set. You then assemble the genes. You can assemble the genes, for instance, by using a procedure known as Gibson assembly, which I have taught to you during synthetic biology class. You can assemble the genes without any scar using Gibson assembly and you will have a single gene construct. Once you have your single gene construct, you need to use a promoter. So that promoter which you basically fuse to this gene cluster should be derived from the plant in which you are going to perform the transformation. Okay. So another aspect of promoter incorporation is the tissue specificity. Some promoters may be root specific, some promoters may be leaf specific, some promoters may be fruit specific. So by referring to databases, you can identify the specificity of the promoter. For instance, if you are producing a pharmaceutical compound, you wouldn't like that compound to be present in the roots because you will then have to trim the entire plant and obtain the roots. You would prefer it to be present in the leaves or maybe in the fruit which can be harvested. So in this case, you need to select promoter based on tissue specificity. So we do have promoters in the database which are linked to specific organs or tissues in the plant. Once you have this entire gene construct in place, you can transform it or ligate it onto a vector, usually agrobacterium. And you can have an inducible promoter as well, in which case, for instance, you have plant promoters which are regulated by a developmental cycle. They may be regulated by ethylene, ethylene gas. So you may, you, maybe when you want to express your gene, you grow your plant to a certain stage and then you induce it using ethylene gas and then you will have a higher production of that pharmaceutical compound. So these things, these approaches can be undertaken when you want to develop your gene construct. And you have your reporter gene and selectable marker. So once you have all this in place, you transform it into plants using biologic methods. Or you can use agrobacterium mediated transfection of the plant. Okay. And then you go through your regular cycle which is basically careless induction screening for the callus based on reporter genes or on the hygromycin resistance. Then you regenerate the plants, you regenerate the roots and you regenerate the full plants. So at this stage you can use marker assisted selection for screening for those traits. So you, you know your suite of genes, your five or six genes in your construct, you can utilize the same primers to test for inheritance. So you trace the genes. So we screen for transformants and we select them for commercial upscaling. Okay, there are some things which can go wrong. When you introduce a foreign gene into a plant, that gene is not generally accepted into the chromosome. It's registered by the plant. That's the rule of the thumb. So the gene may not integrate into the host genome. It may express transiently. Transiently means in the F1 generation you'll have the gene being expressed, in F2 it will be lost. So in the case of these kind of experiments, it's best to resort to tissue culture. So you do not develop, you do not keep breeding them, you basically utilize the germplasm from tissue culture. So you have a control on the gene expression and the gene integration. So sometimes the gene may be integrated into the host, but it's not expressed. So in that case, you have to go back to your drawing board and redesign all your promoters and redo this experiment. And sometimes gene is only expressed in F1 generation, in which case you can resolve this problem by using tissue culture. So the reason why genetic engineering is difficult is many factors. Earlier days, we used to assume that we could transform a gene from one plant to another by excising out the intron. However, today we know the intron is responsible for gene regulation in eukaryotes. So it's generally accepted practice that when you transform a gene into plants, you permit the intron into the construct as well. So you engineer the intron, or you let the intron be as it is, and your likelihood of the gene expression is higher. Sometimes the promoters may not be functional. 
For instance, you select a promoter from rice, it may not be functional in tomato. So you need to identify the promoter compatibility. Between. So we have a plant promoter database which, in which you can identify all the promoters and their compatibilities. So the third one is you, when you in, insert your cassette, your genes may be lost as a result of recombination. Then you have lethal introduction. Lethal introduction is sometimes the RNA transcript produced by the gene or the protein product may interfere with other pathways in the plant. Okay. Or maybe the RNA may also interfere with regulatory pathways because you have microRNAs and RNA regulation. So your RNA from your construct may be interfering with other RNAs and it may result in lethality or kill the plant. And finally, you have the biggest regulatory headache which is transgene escape. So when you go in for genetic engineering, you have to undergo uh, entire legislative process as I explained in risk assessment. So transgene escape is the major constraint because if your genes escape, you are liable for legal action under different legal uh, frameworks of the country. Okay, so we come down to the end of this lecture. So the question which is proposed is how can you apply marker selection to optimize the development of determinate hybrids. That's your reflection point and your assignment.